what's up you guys i'm here with another video for you guys i hope you guys are enjoying the more frequent uploads if so let me know in the comments below i just had a lot of material uh i still got a bunch of videos that i i got i got planned i'm actually writing them down like all my ideas i'm getting help from my friends on this one uh, shout out to my boy gage uh, gage x scapegoat he's always in my description be sure to sub to him that's my bro um we're here to talk about barrier statues you guys and we're here to talk about why as the title says Barrier statues may be the best answer to the meta right now. And the reason I say that is because these cards were invented to basically shut out the meta at any point in the game. And I say that because, as you guys can see, there is a barrier statue for every element possible. There is a water, there is an earth, there is a light, there is a fire, there is a wind, there is a dark. That pretty much covers all the elements. Now, let's start with the basics. Which statues are you not going to play? I'm going to eliminate the dark ones right now because dark decks exist. Burning Abyss exists. Cosmo exists. Um, all the new decks that are coming out that have dark monsters, they exist. Gone. Next, light. Why are we eliminating light? Freaking ABCs, man. They're all light. So, unfortunately, we got to put light and dark away. Now, before they all go, the one thing I want to say is barrier statues were first, in a sense, introduced to the game when Tyler Nolan top aided, I believe it was a regional, playing barrier statues during Dragon Ruler format. He played the barrier statue, the dark one and the light one, because those cards literally said you cannot summon anything you cannot special summon anything except for this type of monster and since dragon rulers were all the elements except light and dark they couldn't summon any of them so that's where the deck came from i just think it's pretty crazy i just wanted to give a little backstory so bye to the light now what's the next statue we're not going to play fire is up in the air the reason why people aren't playing fire is because of infernoids now how relevant infernoids are has still not 100 percent been established infernoids are topping here and there they did top ycs minneapolis in a pure build Burning Abyss, Infernoids is also a deck. So I feel that Infernoids' presence is there. And I feel that instead of eliminating the Barrier Statue of Infernos, we could actually put it to the, to the side deck. Now, why do I say to the side deck? Well, the way the Barrier Statues work is you always want to have, like, about three, like three statues and Fossil Dinas to, you know, pretty much cover your elements. But... For the main part, you want to have extra statues to side in when, you know, the other element just isn't as good. So now we're down to water, earth, and wind. Okay, wind was the preferred one at the time. The reason being is that not barely any decks are being played were wind. However, Magispectors has popped up and proven itself to be one of the best decks in the game. Tides of the Brethren has made it insane. So now the barrier statue of wind has fallen down to where it is good, definitely good, not without its charm, a great side deck card but it is not as strong in the main deck as it once was. That leaves us with water and with uh, earth. So which one is the best? The best right now, I would honestly say, is the barrier statue of the drought, which is the earth one, because if you look at the current decks of the format, ABC, Blue Eyes, Burning Abyss, um, I don't know, Minerva, all, all just any random deck, Dark Magicians, etc., None of them are Earth. The only deck that I know that is playing consistent Earth monsters, I don't actually know how consistent, but I would say is some version of Pendulums. Another reason you eliminate Fire, I'm sorry, is uh, Metal Foes. I'm dumb. Don't don't listen to me, but Metal Foes too. Uh, so that's why Fire is in the side deck and not in the main deck anymore. But now people are wondering, okay, well, what do we do You know, with Water and Earth? Well, there's one thing I forgot to add, and I'm going to add it right now. This is the ultimate barrier statue right there fossil dino that is the ultimate barrier statue the reason being is this card is literally a barrier statue for everything your opponent can just not special summon so people are wondering okay by the title of the video what do i mean when i say barrier statues are the answer to the are probably the best answer to the meta right now i really feel that they are i feel that the deck does everything you would want in a stun deck and so much more it establishes a board that literally says you cannot play Yu-Gi-Oh. Your deck cannot do what it wants to do. If you slap down a barrier statue of Earth against ABCs, sure, they can normal summon their guys. But with the plethora of traps and the plethora of protective cards we play to protect our barrier statues, your barrier st statues are not leaving the field. So for that reason, I feel that that is uh, reason number one. Reason number two is... 
the deck plays cards like Card of Demise. You can play it whether you want to or not. Now, a lot of people, my boy Gage made, made a lot of in-depth videos about the deck, and he says that Card of Demise is a win more card in the deck because sometimes it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it isn't necessary. I feel that in a deck like this that you're playing a low monster count, I feel that it's definitely a card that I would play, and in testing, I, you know, I have played Card of Demise and I love it. Another thing, you can play Pot of Duality. When you combine Pot of Duality with Card of Demise, you've got a great draw engine. People could say, what about Desires? Desires is up in the air. I feel that with such a low monster count, if you guys want to know like how it goes, you usually assemble your deck like that or even like this, to where you basically are playing seven statues because you consider Fossil Dyna a, a universal statue. You're one water and you're three... Uh, droughts for earth now the one problem with water is if you do play against mermails it sucks that's why water uh, you play one or two max and that's it just because if you do play against mermail i mean that kind of sucks but if you slap down to earth against them they better have an out to it or they're not going to get to play Yu-Gi-Oh. so i think it's pretty cool um, so you are playing a low monster count, which means you can support Card of Demise, not draw a lot of monsters you can support pot of duality you're never special summoning and you can draw out of the cards you need why you know why else is the deck so good look at the current format every deck wants to special summon the fact that you're packing three fossil dinas in the deck literally says you can't do that your deck cannot do what it's meant to do and i feel that that's just crazy i feel that dina plus you know moon mirror shield dina plus back row is just amazing this format abcs have proven to be probably one of the most dominant decks to ever come out simply a structured deck but you know combined with the cards that make the deck abc buster dragon's an amazing card however you throw down uh, fossil dina or you throw down water or you throw down earth they can't do anything sure they can summon their guys all damn day sure they can equip and protect themselves but eventually they're going to run out of steam and that's when you're going to fire back if they ever clear your board you have traps like quaking mirror force regular mirror force to say you know what you're still not going to play you you're not going to get to play Yu-Gi-Oh. so those are all the like the main reasons i feel the deck's really good what's another reason well let's go to the support cards of course i already mentioned card of demise and pot of duality is a great draw engine uh i don't feel um, pot of desires is the best call in the deck because if you do it it's rare that it would happen if you banish multiple statues it can really hurt you you have no way of getting them back so you don't play cards like omega you don't have a way of recycling your banished pile so i i don't really um i, re I don't really suggest it and there's also another reason it's because uh for the uh, another thing i'll talk about is how budget this deck is but we'll get to that at the end of the video so for the rest of the support cards, Forbidden Lance. I personally play Forbidden Lance because it reminds me of the days I played Dino Raven and played three Forbidden Lance. It's an MST and protect protection in one. Being able to get over problematic monsters is very important. Being able to get over anything that would try to stop you, any trap, any spell, anything that would try to hurt you, try to get your barrier statue off the board, you have Lance for. Solid card in general. Probably the best spell card in the deck is Moon Mirror Shield. Moon Mirror Shield, for those of you who don't know, is if the if the equip monster battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation, the equip monster's attack and defense become equal to the attack or defense, whichever is higher, of the opponent's monster plus 100 during damage calculation only. So that means it doesn't matter what they have on the board. They can have a Blue Eyes Chaos Max 4000 attack point guy. You can summon a statue and run it over and they take 100. Pretty ridiculous you can get over anything with moon mirror shield and another thing about this card if this face up card is sent from the field to the graveyard you can pay 500 life points place this card on either the top or bottom of your deck now why is that relevant that's relevant because if for some reason this card gets destroyed and you lose your statue and you have another one in hand you can pay 500 points put it back to the top of your deck and next turn you're going to just slap moon mirror shield back on the board and you're just going to run over whatever monsters they have now, what I really like is that this literally, this two-card combo of a statue and Moon Mirror Shield literally lets you just take on any threat your opponent throws out at you. I think that's super important in this format. Buster Dragon, so what? You just run over it if it ever hits the field. But the way this deck plays, you're usually opening with a statue and a Moon Mirror Shield in back row. They're not going to get to play Yu-Gi-Oh. They're not going to get their game state very far. And you're going to win because they just literally cannot play. So I feel Moon Mirror Shield, without a doubt, is probably the best spell card in the game great protection just the ultimate effect the ultimate just kind of middle finger to any boss monster your opponent throws out and i think it's just amazing so that is definitely a staple in the deck other things that make the deck amazing of course this is a stun deck which means we are playing a plethora of traps now this, this is no deck don't think that this is a deck profile it's not i actually do have a barrier statue deck profile that i'll bring to you guys soon i i do have it as a side project um but this is not the case this is not a deck profile this is just to talk about a lot of the best traps that you can play 
I'm gonna start with Quaking Mirror Force. The reason why Quaking Mirror Force is here is because I feel that for this type of deck, it's one of the best Mirror Forces. You could argue, I personally feel Drowning, in, in my personal opinion, is the best Mirror Force ever printed. However, this is not a deck that is not going to summon a monster. This is not a deck that is going to sit on, you know, just back row all day. Your goal is to get a monster on the board because getting a monster on the board means your opponent can't play the game. Quaking lets you get past any problematic card that might show up. It's rare that there are cards that will be able to get over your statues, you know, outside of a normal summon, if you don't have a back row to stop it, or a moon mirror shield, or a lance, etc. Quaking is there. Quaking is your best friend. It literally just flips everything down. They can't change it. They're just stuck. Now, you could argue you could play the other mirror force, the one that bounces into the hand. That's fine and all, but it doesn't get rid of the problem. We want to get rid of the problem. You get rid of the problem because with the statue with moon mirror shield attacks, it gets over anything. The problem's gone. They can't special summon. They can't get anything out of the grave because that would be special summoning, so you just lock them down with a single attack so that's just crazy so uh quaking is definitely just a great card now other support cards that you can run uh the phantom wings phantom knight wings this card lets you target one monster on the field it gains 500 attack that's a permanent 500 attack point boost and also the first time the target would be destroyed by battle or card effect it is not destroyed so this lets you save your monsters you don't care about the other effect that's if you're playing phantom knights however this gives you protection and a 500 point boost meaning that your 1200 dinah is now 17 your statues are now 15 that can be very relevant especially when you're trying to get over problematic monsters even if they're just normal summons this card is great anything that says my statue will live one more turn means that it's going to you know help you win the game my personal favorite trap card the phantom knight sword i love this card i feel that this card is absolutely amazing in the deck the monster gains 800 and it gets the same effect if it would be destroyed by battle arc or card effect. You can destroy this card instead. So basically, you boost your Dinah to 19, you boost your statues to 18, and it's literally, no, uh, you boost your, excuse me, you boost your Dinah to 2,000 and you boost your statues to 18, and that is just insane to me. Gets over anything, it's protected if anything were to happen. It's just an amazing card overall, and I highly suggest you play it. This literally, again, protects your statues, allowing you to control the game and win because these monsters say you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. And the last card I'm going to go over is a personal favorite of my boy Gage's, Dark Bride. There's been an argument for years over how good Dark Bribe really is. It's seen some play. It hasn't seen that much play. I feel Dark Bribe is an absolute staple in this deck for the reason that literally it does not matter what your opponent draws. There are very few outs to barrier statues. If they twin twister you and they're trying to get rid of like your moon mirror shield or anything valuable and you have a card like dark bribe, you win the game because it literally cannot be stopped except with another counter trap. There is no other counter trap except outside of what is it ultimate providence or sc solemn scolding that can stop dark bribe or another dark bribe, you know, if it, if it comes to that. But that literally says, have a card, your main card is negated. Do you have another out? Okay, you don't. Okay, I win. That's why I really like Dark Bribe. I have not played Dark Bribe in the past in like Clee Forts or anything like that. I've played Magic Drain, but I feel that now the format has shifted. There are Solemn Strikes run, not Solemn Strikes, but there are so there's Solemn Warning. There's traps from Magic Specters everywhere that are trying to stop you from setting up your board and setting up your win condition, which is basically a statue in Moon Mirror and Back Row. Dark Bribe literally can stop anything. And they draw a card, so what? There's no life point difference. If it's, you know, if you're going for game and they try to stop you, you dark private, you win the game. Because no one is playing Gores or Trigodi or anything like that. Not e it wouldn't even matter if they were in this type of deck. They couldn't even summon them. So I feel Dark Bribe alone is probably one of the best uh, protection cards this deck can use. So yeah, I feel overall barrier statues are underrated i know a lot of people are trying to play them now i feel that they've just been underrated for years and now people are starting to realize you know this deck is something that you should fear this is something that you should prepare to play against um, my boy pete navarro was citing three copies of barrier statue of storm winds and his magic specter deck be be warned that card is real it, you know it may be only a thousand attack a thousand defense but this card literally says if you're not playing wind monsters you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! So I think that's pretty crazy. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. The last thing is that this deck is dirt cheap, you guys. Dine has been reprinted multiple times. These are all commons. The only semi-expensive card would be Card of Demise. They're sitting at about maybe 20 bucks. Outside of that, it's not that expensive. You know, if you don't have them, you want to build a budget build, you can play 
three duality and you can play upstart goblin and you know it'll still get you there it's still 39 cards i just think that this deck really needs to get some attention i feel that it's underrated and i feel that if people actually took the time to play it tried to you know take a step away from meta and try to play something anti-meta they discover that this really is a crazy deck it's crazy that decks like this that say you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh exist i know people make fun of abc but literally you play barrier statues against abc your match is pretty solid in my opinion because there's not a lot of things they can do if they can't get past your first statue so i feel that that is just amazing and in all honesty without abc buster dragon the deck is nothing but a rank four deck and when you're monsters say you can't special summon you won't be making any of those rank fours so yeah anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to smash that like button be sure to comment below with any of the discussions you'd like to see i feel that like i said i feel this deck is definitely underrated and should be brought more to the light and i feel that we're going to see it a lot more as the format progresses so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know any other discussions you'd like to see and i'll bring them to you in a future video see you guys in the next video thank you for watching